Greetings Wonder, this is Atlas here and welcome to The Void. Today I come back with something that you have been waiting for quite a long time, I would say. Oh, it's finally here. I'm finally going to do this. I'm going to be reacting and breaking down to Dancing Mad from Final Fantasy VI. This has been quite the request along all my composer react uh, series. Among all the videos I saw, I always see uh, at least one uh, com comment uh, regarding uh, this particular track. Uh, I did only like a little bit, like a tiny little bit of research about this, uh, this original soundtrack for this particular game and I, I see that uh, Nobuo Uematsu was also the composer for this original soundtrack. So. Uh, taking that into consideration, I would say that I have really high hopes for this particular track. Also, it's quite a long track, by the way. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, it doesn't matter, I'm eager to listen to it. Uh, among all the, 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 the comments that I got, I'm just going to quote this one because it's the short one and it would lead us straight into the into the reaction and the breakdown, which is from uh, Pier Francesco Pierleoni, and he says, "Listen to Dancing Mad from Final Fantasy VI." So there you go, very short and sweet. Thank you, Pier, for your request and uh, the request of many other people. Thank you for that. Uh, so without further ado, onward. Okay, Final Fantasy VI, finally, dancing map, boom. Super bombastic introduction.
require the melody, just remember just, I, this sounds sort of like something else. Yeah, those kind of wrong scales. Scale wrong, so apologies.
This song has so many layers. A lot of pedal notes. Super neoclassical pedal notes. And an ominous sounding too. I feel like I'm listening to Bach here. Or a song by, by Ingrid Malmsteen. Super massive chord. <coughs> Apologies. such a playful part. I'm going to explain why afterwards. Resolution. Brilliant. And it fades out and then starts something else. That's an interesting choice, by the way. Got me there. <laughs> uh, 
that this song was brilliant and I can't wait to tell you all about this particular track because it is indeed I mean it's a 17 minute song so it, it, I have a lot to talk about this so let's jump uh, let's jump right into the breakdown of the song let's break it down Okay, so let's start by talking about what I was saying almost to the end of the video, which was the, the amount of care and detail into the composition. Now, this, of course, is not for a very, this very particular reason that I'm going to explain, because in modern music, 
of course we have Kerr, uh, I mean good composers, great composers uh, put good, uh, great care and, and, and detail into what they do, but there's a, a specific reason why composer, composers in this era, in the 8-bit era and the 16-bit era, uh, had to take more of that into account. Because remember, uh, nowadays we have uh, storage to almost throw to the garbage. You, you know, you have you have free accounts for Google Drive, for Dropbox. Uh, uh, we have. Um, terabytes of, of storage in our hard drives and so forth, right? But uh, in the era of the NES and um, SNES, uh, that wasn't the case. So, storage was very limited and develop uh, uh, video game developers had to, you know, make incredible, incredible, brilliant, come up with incredible, brilliant ideas to, you know, um, be able to use that limited amount of storage but at the same time make a game that will fit their vision and also, well, fit the cartridge itself. And of course the music comes into, in, in, into play into this because music takes storage in the game, of course, uh, in the cartridge in this case. So. A composer would be somewhat limited into the amount of tracks that he could uh, use in a single, you know, in a single composition. And um, you can notice that in this particular track, there are many, there are many instruments, but they each sometimes play by itself, like they are isolated. And it's nowadays you could hear more of a large uh, a spread of of instrument instruments playing a role at the same time, but something tells me that because of the limitations of the hardware and the technology, uh, uh, specifically the storage of the the cartridges at the time, specifically in this case, of course, I'm talking about the SNES or the Super Famicom, I think it, would, it was called in Japan. Um, and it, it, you couldn't, you know, make those arrangements and those compositions that way. So, I think that um, uh, he had to manage that in, in a way that he, he said, okay, I'm, go I'm going to have this uh, spectrum of, of instruments, right? Uh, but I'm not gonna be able, uh, since I'm not gonna be able to use them at the same time, uh, because the amount of tracks that also creates a volume in, in the resources that the, of the of the of the console itself, uh, he decided to isolate them. Now, this is not only uh, the, the the only reason I would say. Uh, because in dubstep, uh, you, you have uh, some dubstep composers uh, tried to compose music in isolated sections because they don't want so many instruments fighting for the, the, the frequency spectrum. I'm getting a very, a little bit technical here, but uh, that might be a reason why you can hear these isolated, isolated instruments in the composition. Nevertheless, it doesn't take out of the genius of or brilliance of of this particular track. Now, before I carry on onto the next part, I want you to listen to this part with me uh, very, very briefly. Okay? I'm going to play it right now. It's for progression. Listen to that, right? That sounded. I, I said at the beginning that that sounded extremely familiar. With, uh, I mean, it sounded ex super familiar uh, to me. Now listen to this and tell me what you hear. Okay, so let's carry on with the breakdown. Uh, like I was mentioning before, uh, 
I mean, so many things are happening in this particular track because it's like it's like uh, many tracks uh, built into one. You know, it's like uh, the the first act and the second act and the third act and the fourth act. It, I think it it the song you could interpret as almost like a theater play or something like that because it had the introduction with the with the organ uh, you know chord progression very ominous with minor chords and so forth and then it, 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 it started playing uh, um, I mean it made a transition into sort of a martial uh, into a martial track you can hear that into, into, in, the, in the way the percussion is playing around in the track and also that that <laughs> I, I, it's a riff it's a metal riff man that mm, 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 mm. I mean, you could place that in, in a in a metal song or a rock song, and it would it would be an incredible riff to be a part of a song. Um, and after that, uh, it makes a transition. I mean, I, I think I remember that someone told me that uh, that um, Nobuo was in a rock band or a metal band or something like that, and I can tell. Because those kind of things that he did in that martial section, kind of martial section, are straight from a rock uh, song or a, or a metal song. So uh, let's jump uh, a little bit further. Uh, it comes now. There comes another transition into the uh, into the neoclassical part, which was beautiful. Uh, it sounded very much like a, like a baroque. Uh, era kind of composition, you know, with the harpsichord, the, 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 the pedal notes and so forth. And uh, let's see here, oh yeah, and uh, he made some inter interesting choices in, so part of, in, in a part of the song where it fades out and then start, it's, it starts another part of the song. It, it's almost counterintuitive, but for some reason it works in the in the in the song. And you know, to me, when those kind of things happens, it's very uh, endearing to me because I didn't go to to music school. You know, I, I the theory, the very scarce theory that I know is because of videos that I that I watch and things that I I've read in articles and so forth, but. Uh, uh, I didn't go to music school for that, but nevertheless, I know for a fact. Well, not for a fact. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not, I don't know for a fact, but I almost know for sure that that decision is very counterintuitive to what they will teach you in school. That that's what I'm trying to get. The, the point I'm trying to get across. Uh, then it it goes into this very Again, very rock, almost metal part uh, with the bass. You know, it's that the has the bass. Um, I mean, the the bass is carrying that that particular part because even even the, even the percussion, it's not and it's not even so much a percussion. It's like drums. It, you, it's a it's a drum rhythm that you could hear in a in a rock song or a metal song. Yeah, and oh, uh, uh, it has. I think it. Ha yeah, it has some uh, electric guitars like buried in the back, like way in the back to not make it so obvious. But it, uh, they are there. And then it goes into this crazy, <laughs> progressive, uh, rock, rock, rock metal kind of thing. It almost sounds like Dream Theater. Yeah, so I think that that's like Dream Theater 101, that, that part, like that kind of progressive part. Now, of course, I'm, I'm talking because metal and rock music are such mo so much a reference to me, but uh, yeah, this, like I was mentioning before, I think someone told me that he was on, on a rock band or a metal band, and I can hear it all over the place, all over the place. And, uh, well, 
this track also has very super massive uh, chords. You know, they are like uh, seven plus, eight plus notes sometimes. Like they sound like super massive chords in the organ, and that gives the the track such a, a dramatic, dramatic almost, almost. Uh, Almost mel melodramatic because first uh, it's it's different, you know, dra uh, something that sounds dramatic and something that sounds melodramatic. There's uh, there's a huge gap in between those two things, you know. And melodramatic almost uh, sometimes can sound cheesy, but in a good what in a good way. And those super super massive super lush ominous chords, you know, like minor chords and, some, and stuff like that um, are, in, are in, I would say, are in that category but I, the thing that I, I ask myself is what led him to, to make that decision uh, and uh, maybe it was in the gameplay of the, of, of, the, of the game itself, you know, like where when this song is it's going along with the game. Um, something incredibly massive in, in the. I, I would I would assume that something incredibly massive is going on in, in the Final Fantasy lore or or story in the game to to have those kind of super crazy chords. Are, they, they are so massive that they, it almost sounds like they click sometimes. But well, nevertheless, let me hear a little bit more um, uh, for the ending. Oh yeah, there's another thing that uh, he plays around a lot with, with the music. It's like uh, when you think that something uh, starts to get a feel to the when you start to get a feel for the track, then he surprises you with something. And sometimes I think I, I it felt like he syncopated the. The, the the progression in the chords or the or, or the or the cycle of, of the progression because in, in a couple of times like I said they, like he got me it, it was because I was anticipating the 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 repetition of, of the chord progression in in the in the accent of the of the compass but uh, he 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 didn't drop it on me. Uh, you know, at the time I, I was suspecting him, he turned in. Uh, it turned into a silence, or he composed it. He arranged it into a silence, and then he, he brought it. He brought it. He brought it uh, again in the track. So those kind of playful things are <laughs> are um, uh, very endearing and very thoughtful because they are not there. Uh, those are not there just because you know. It, it it was like, ah, oh, let's do something that sounds cool. I mean, I think he very deliberately uh, composed that in that way to give you that uh, reaction, emotion, or, you know, whatever it may be. So, I'm very glad that I finally did this particular track. Uh, it, is, it does justice to the, to the length of it, 17 plus minutes. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna give this track a diamond batch for sure. Um, nothing else to say about this. It's a brilliant composition, wonderful arrangements, uh, very thoughtful in the way it was composed uh, due to the hardware limitations of the time. Really, nothing else to say. So thank you very much for watching this video, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Also please don't forget to visit my subscribe star where you can get your requests happen in no time. And also my Teespring shop where you can get very cool t-shirt with a very cool design. I recently designed another one uh, with my final phrase, which is Ex nihilo, nihil fit.